today we're gonna talk about the book that has changed my life and it's my favorite book ever. It's Atomic Habits by James Clear and I'm gonna give you a quick overview of what this video is gonna be about. I'm gonna go over why I liked this book so much, how to build good habits and break bad ones, why habits are important and how to actually make habits stick. So let's go over why I liked this book so much. Well, one of the first reasons is because each chapter is timed perfectly at 30 minutes long, which makes the habit of reading so much easier. Because if you're anything like me, nonfiction's a little boring, but this book honestly has made me love nonfiction. Not love it, but I can tolerate it and I can get through it pretty easily now. Also, the audiobook is read by the author too, and he's got a really great voice, by the way, ladies, so I highly recommend it. But here's the thing too. I love reading nonfiction while listening to it. It helps me remember what I'm reading and it also helps me follow along a lot easier too. As I'm reading, I'm able to understand exactly what's going on. Every day when I would take my break at work and I read this book, I always felt so motivated and inspired to get things done afterwards because each chapter also has key takeaways for what you can do with what you learned. I have yet to find a book that comes even close to Atomic Habits. Like this should be on the top of your TBR list. And for those who don't know what TBR means, it's for books to be read. And next up, let's go over why habits are so important. Well, habits make things automatic and it makes things easier. Most of the things we do are considered habits. Like think of this, for example, when you go into a dark room and you're looking around for that light switch and you turn it on, you don't even think about it, you just do it, it's automatic. And you could do it with your eyes closed. That's a good habit. It just makes things so much easier. And if you've been around here for a while, you're hearing me say it all the time, we like to make the good things easy and the bad things difficult. That's where this comes from. So let's talk about how to build those good habits though, because building good habits can be difficult, but you're in luck because there were five key ideas I learned from this book. The number one way to build a good habit is to make it easy. Conventional wisdom holds that motivation is the key to habit change. Maybe if you really wanted it, you'd actually do it. But the truth is, our real motivation is to be lazy and to do what is convenient. When habits are easy, you're more likely to do them and stick with them. And the second way to build a new habit is number two, change your environment. Optimize your environment to make things easier. And if you wanna learn more about this, I have a whole video on it and you can check that out right here. When reading this book last year, it was last June specifically, it was hot as shit outside and I kept reading it because I just kept wanting to learn more and more. But here's the thing, when I was reading this book, I decided to move my whole house around to make it work for me and not against me anymore. Because you wanna make the good things obvious in your life. You want them to be so easy that it'd be stupid to say no. And when I'm talking about environments, I'm talking about outside of your house too. Think of communities, think of the gym, think of the bookshop, anywhere that you wanna build a good habit, go to these places. Be surrounded by people that are doing the thing that you want to do. Like if you're going to the gym, everyone around you at the gym is working out, it's gonna incentivize you to keep working out. And even with like the yoga studio, if you're like on the fence about doing yoga and you're just not about it, join a yoga studio, girl. Be surrounded by people that are also doing yoga so you're more prone to keep up with it. And since we're talking about books, maybe you're not into reading so much and you wanna get really into reading, join some book clubs. There's ones online or you can go in person and talk about the book that you're reading with other people. It makes it a lot more interesting and it'll make it more fun for you to do. I even have a free feminine community. It's called Empress Energy. And if you're interested in that, you can check it out in the link in the description. Moving on to number three though, we've got temptation bundling. And what this means is rewarding yourself. Do the habit and reward yourself afterwards. Feel good because rewards make things more fun. They make things more exciting. We love treating yourself, right? Treat yourself when you do a good habit because sometimes unfortunately good habits aren't necessarily fun. Exercising and reading nonfiction and eating healthy, all of these things, eh, not always the most fun thing to do, I get it. That's where temptation bundling comes in because you'll be able to figure out how to make yourself wanna do it more. You can drink an Olipop while you're reading a nonfiction book or anything that you think is tasty. I just love Olipops. You could also give yourself a reward after you've finished this new habit that you're trying to build to incentivize you to keep doing it. For example, going to a cute town and getting a bubble tea after I completed a bunch of videos for the day, that that is my jam. I love treating myself to that nice reward after I've done something that I've been meaning to do. Next up, we have number four. This is one of my favorites and I swear by it. 
Get yourself an accountability partner because this is game changing. This is what's going to help you keep good habits and break bad ones. This is someone who is going to hold you accountable for doing the thing that you said you wanted to do or doing the thing that you said you didn't wanna do. And it could be anyone you trust. This could be a family member, a coworker, a close friend, a romantic partner, anybody you want that can talk to you. It can't be your cat, okay? I have my boyfriend as my accountability partner. He helps me daily with staying off my phone because if you're anything like me, you're addicted to your phone and this is a really hard habit to break. And they make it so hard they really do. They've got these nerds in Silicon Valley that specialized in keeping you glued to your phone. So don't blame yourself for this one. Just know that it is a very hard addiction to break. And my boyfriend, thankfully, he helps me get through this and he holds me accountable for when I say I don't wanna use my phone. He's like, hey, you said you didn't wanna be on your phone, so put it away. He says it nicely, don't worry. He's not yelling at me or anything. That's the thing too. If you've got an accountability partner that's being mean to you, tell him, hey, don't be mean, just tell me if I'm doing something wrong and we'll get through it. He actually also helped me with reading Atomic Habits because there were days where I just didn't feel like it. Like I said, reading nonfiction isn't always the easiest thing to do. We were reading it at the same time though and this actually made it a lot more fun and we were able to talk about each chapter after we finished reading. We were able to hold each other accountable to continue reading this book. I highly recommend getting an accountability partner that's interested in the same things that you are so you guys can hold each other accountable. And you'll also be able to encourage each other to keep going with this good habit. And lastly, there will be more pressure to complete the habit because if you don't, you'll end up letting them down. So that's another good reason to get yourself an accountability partner that is going to wanna do the same things as you. And the last one on the list here is number five, identity change. You gotta change your self image. You gotta change yourself into the person that does the good habit and break down those limiting beliefs. You might be saying to yourself, I can never be the person that could read nonfiction. That's just not me. Change that attitude, girl. Change your identity and make it a good identity. Be the girl that can read nonfiction and enjoy reading it. Or you may think you're the kind of person that can't exercise, that can't stay off their phone, that can't wake up early. I don't care what it is, girly. You can do anything you set your mind to, I promise you. And giving yourself positive affirmations is proven to help change your identity. Some examples are, I prioritize my sleep. Exercising is an important part of my life. I am in control of the way that I use my phone. And now that we've gone over everything about good habits, we're gonna talk about breaking those bad habits. Remember me saying, make the good things easy and the bad things difficult? Well, that's how you make a bad habit break. Make it difficult, girly. The greater the fiction, the less likely the habit. It is remarkable how little friction is required to prevent unwanted behavior. So it's all the same things, just in reverse. Uno card reverse that shit. Hide things away. Make it harder to get the thing that you don't wanna do anymore. It could be anything. Just make it hard to reach, hard to get to. Put it at the top of your fridge or all the way in the back of the cabinet if it's like some snack that you're addicted to. Because if you can't see it, you won't do it. Seriously, hide away junk food. Get it out of your sight. Out of sight, out of mind. Delete or block distracting apps. I also have ClearSpace on my phone. You can download that and it works wonders. It has helped me so much. I swear by it. Please download it, girly. Unplug your TV or better yet, take your TV and get it out of the room if you're really bad with it. You also may need to cut out negative people in your life because I don't know about you, but I've had a lot of them and snip, snip, or at least limit your time with them because they probably have limiting beliefs and they're probably bringing you down with them and you don't want that shit, girl. They will only encourage bad habits. The people that you do the bad habit with make it easier to do the bad habit and we don't wanna make it easy. We wanna make it difficult. Another thing to note here is what I learned in the book is don't say you're quitting. Instead, say you don't do the thing. For example, if you're trying to quit smoking, I don't care if it's cigarettes, weed, whatever you're into. If you're trying to quit smoking, instead of saying, I'm quitting, say, I'm not a smoker. I actually used to say this back when I smoked cigarettes in high school and it really does work, but it was cool to see that that's a thing and it, that's what helps people quit smoking. And next up, let's talk about how to make things stick. Focus on the habit rather than the outcome. You have control over your habits, like posting on YouTube, for instance. I have control over the input that I put into YouTube, but I don't have control over the likes, the views, the comments, none of that. I can only control how often I post, which is the input. And another way to make a habit stick is to be patient. I know it's hard because we all want instant gratification and social media is to blame for this. And I am such a hardcore advocate for 
try to get off social media as much as possible. Make that one of those things that you really try working on, girly. It can take one to two months to form a really good habit, but patience is key. You're not just changing your behavior, you're actually changing your brain. Some things will be faster, like building the habit of going for walks, but quitting bad habits is gonna be a little more difficult and it will end up taking a little bit longer, but as long as you're patient, you will get through it. I promise you that. The reason it'll take longer is because they're so addictive, so your brain will be craving it, but you have to stay strong. But listen, please take me seriously on this one. If there's anything that you wanna know about building good habits and breaking bad ones, it's to not take on too much at once. Please be patient. It takes a lot of effort to build a good habit. Don't overwhelm yourself. Try focusing on one to two things at a time and start stupidly easy. For example, in the book, he said, if you want to go for walks, just put your shoes on and walk outside. Don't even go for the walk. Just get into the habit of putting your shoes on and stepping outside. Really keep it so simple so that it's so stupid. You could not say no to it. You'll just end up doing it. And you may even want to go for the walk because you're outside already anyway. But listen, Seriously, take it slow and make it as easy as possible because the key to all of this is to just get started. And I highly recommend setting that first goal or that first habit if you don't go for walks to do that. Put your shoes on and just step outside because the easier it is, the less excuses you're gonna have. And once you get started, you'll probably wanna just keep going. The hardest part is just getting started. And listen, if I convinced you to read this book, please do me a solid and just skip the intro because it takes too long and just get right into it. Go right into chapter one. Take my word for it, the intro is useless and read it on your Kindle because this makes it so much easier. I swear by the Kindle, this has made me want to read more and it has made the habit of reading so much easier. I can read faster, it's lightweight. I absolutely love my Kindle Paperwhite and the best thing of all is that you can dim the light settings for nighttime reading. So seriously, go to Amazon, get yourself a Kindle Paperwhite and thank me later, girly. And if you wanna learn how to change your environment, which is something I mentioned in this video, you can check that video out right here. And one last thing, if you want, I have a free feminine community, it's called Empress Energy, and there's a whole bunch of like-minded women in there that share the same interests and hobbies as you. So come get to know us in there. The link is in the description. I'll see you next time, bestie. Bye for now.